When you get into network technology, you ever have that question nagging at the back of your mind? Why do we have IP addresses and MAC addresses? Can't we just use one address to rule them all? Well, let's discuss it. Let's say we had this magic device, we'll call it a network switch, where we started plugging in all the computers in our organization, and those computers only had one address. We'll say it's A, B, C, and D. Well, eventually, we're going to max this device out and connect to another device, and over here we have E, F, G, and H, and we just keep going and going and connecting to a device in another organization because, you know, now we have to have other organizations talking, right? And we keep expanding, expanding, expanding. Eventually, you reach a scalability limit where we just have billions of devices that are all plugged in. So when this guy says, oh, I need to contact device AA95B6, you know, because we would <laughs> long since exhaust the alphabet, uh, you know, these devices, the switches, we'll say, would have to have some giant index with billions of addresses in it, and they'd be like, uh, let me look. Mm, and they'd have to go down to try and figure out which port to go out. It just wouldn't work. There would be too much information. The devices would never be able to keep up with those tables. Well, somebody figured out a better way. First off, all the devices in the world that have a network card have a MAC address burned into them from the factory. That MAC address is 12 characters long, it's hexadecimal, and the truth be told, we don't usually care about it. It just kind of sits there behind the scenes. What we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is IP addresses, or depending on where you are, you may even deal with one level further, which is a DNS name. Most people just type in www.google.com and don't really know that there's IP addresses at work behind the scenes, but the truth be told, anytime you go to google.com, it's going to translate to an IP address that is real. So your computer is going to go, oh, google.com is really 74.125.224.174. Now, every computer that has an IP address also has a subnet mask. And that subnet mask, most people recognize 255.255.255.0. It's the most common subnet mask, subnet mask in the world. This divides up the IP address into two separate for portions. Wherever you see 255, that represents the network the device is on. Wherever you see the zero, that lines up and represents what device that is on the network. So let's put all these pieces together. Let's say you have a house or a small business, and inside that house you have a router that connects to the internet and all kinds of devices. Let's say you've got a couple computers, you've got a Nintendo Wii, you've got an Xbox, whatever else, you know, mystery device I'll put over here that all plugs into the network. If you're like every home in the world, you probably have a subnet that starts with 192.168.1 or all your IP addresses start with that number, which tells them they're all on the same network. This guy's .5, .6, .7, when I, I mean 192.168.1.5.6.7. So when this guy tries to communicate with this one, he goes, oh, I'm 192.168.1.5, I'm trying to contact .6, He's on my same network because I'm smart enough to realize that's there. So I can send a broadcast, and that's actually known as an ART message. He goes, hello, network. Who is 192.168.1.6? This computer talks back and goes, oh, that's me, and here is my MAC address the only time we really care about a MAC address, but it's all automated. It's all happening behind the scenes. Now, these computers are also smart enough to realize when you're trying to contact something that's not on their network. Like, let's say, for instance, this computer tries to go to www.cbtnuggets.com. Well, what's going to happen is that computer's first going to go to uh, DNS to find out what cbtnuggets.com is. And it goes, oh, you're 184.73.156.146 and it realizes you are not on my network because my network is 192.168.1. You are whatever that number was. So instead, it says, okay, I have to get this to some device that can get me off of my network and get me to cbtnuggets.com. Ah, now we will see the reason why we need two addresses. The kind of device that computer is looking for is known as a router. That's the job of a router, is to help people get off of their network and reach other networks. So this guy says, okay, I need to send this to my router, who is most likely 192.168.1.1. But now we have the dilemma. I need to get this message to 192.168.1.1 but I want to tell it that it's actually going to cbtnuggets.com. The problem is our computers can only put one IP address in the header as the destination. So what do you say? 192.168.1.1? Well, if you do, the router's going to say, yes, how can I help you? Do you put CPT nuggets in the header and hope that it gets there? Well, that doesn't work. You can't just chuck a, a packet out there that says, hey, I'm going to go to 184, you know, and, and just kind of go, be like, go, pa it's like Lassie, you know, go Lassie, go, save Timmy. That's not how it works either. So instead, what this computer will do is it will send an ARP message for the MAC address address of 192.168.1.1. This router comes back and goes, oh, here's my MAC address. The router says, thank you. I'm going to put that MAC address in the header as my destination.
PlayStation Mac, but I'm going to put the cbtnuggets.com IP address 184.73.156.146 in the IP in the uh, header as the destination IP address. Truth be told, once it gets to that router, the router actually tears off its destination MAC address because it's like, okay, MAC address, you've done your job. Now I'm seeing that this needs to go to CBT Nuggets, and it's going to ARP for the next MAC address in the in the chain of things, and then that router is going to ARP for the next MAC address and use separate MAC addresses all the way. Truth be told, you're probably going through a lot of routers, 10 or more, before you actually get to the network that has CBTNuggets.com at it. But eventually, using this dueling system of MAC address and IP addresses, you will get there. So when it's all said and done, the MAC address needs the IP address to tell it the final destination of where you're going. The IP address needs the MAC address to figure out the next step to get there. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.